And good afternoon. Here to preach the gospel to you out here in the open air, just like they've done for hundreds of years in America and thousands of years since Christ. Uh, the Bible's very clear here in 1 Corinthians. The Bible says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Amen? That's what the Bible says. It means that when they hear it, it seems foolish unto them. It's foolishness to them, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy, destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? There are many that are worldly wise that have a lot of worldly wisdom. They, they, they think that they're very intelligent. In fact, they'll tell you that, that there is no God in heaven. They'll tell you that, that uh, you came from a monkey. They'll tell you that, that uh, evolution is how you got here. But the Bible is very clear that God created the heavens and the earth. Even creation beareth witness to God. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the fool it made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For after that, in the wisdom of God, by the wisdom, by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe by this preaching of God's word. That's the, that's the medium that God used to save lost sinners, to bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to them. And you can see all around you what the effect of preaching the gospel has, preaching that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, preaching that man is a sinner and in need of a savior. And that if he does not turn to that savior, that God who created him, he will die and go to a sinner's hell. That's the truth of the gospel. That's what the Bible says. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the world has its own wisdom. They want to go their own way. I can go to heaven my own way. I can be redeemed my own way. I don't need God. I can live my life any old way I want to. That's what the world says. I can live forever, but you won't live forever because one day you will die. It is appointed unto man once to die. We have to think about that, that someday will be our last day on this earth. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. We don't know when that will be. But we do know there will be one day that, that you will die. The Bible says that God chose the wisdom, the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. He chose that. That was His ordained way of bringing the truth, and that's why we're here today. Though it looks foolish to many, it doesn't make sense to some. They look at it and wonder, why are you doing this? We do this because God commanded to go into, therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. The Bible is very clear about that. For the Jews require a sign, it says, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Amen. We preach Christ crucified, not only crucified, but the Lord and the risen Savior who defeated death. And to many, it's foolishness when they hear it. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews, a stumbling block, and under the Greek foolishness. Some say it's foolish to believe that a man rose from the dead. But how many have 500, above 500 witnesses that seen it and testify of it and all have the same story that they saw? the risen Lord and Savior. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The Bible is very clear. The foolishness of God is wiser than man. 
and the weakness of God is stronger than men. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That's a foolish thing for somebody that, for somebody to listen to hear the gospel preach and listen that a man came who was God, who came in the flesh, who lived a perfect sinless life and died on the cross for your sins and rose again for your justification, right. who defeated death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Death was swallowed up in victory because Christ got the victory over death. And you and I can have that same victory by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He chose those things. He chose that foolishness of preaching to confound the wise where somebody would say, why would a man come out in the middle of public and why would he preach like that? Why would he stand up? And I tell you, I submit to you because there's a God in heaven, that's Amen. why. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for sinners. And he was buried and he rose again the Amen. third day. And we get and, he, and creation bears witness to that. And three that bear witness in heaven bear witness to that. And the truth bears witness to that today. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. It's despised today to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's despised today to call men to repentance. But we do it for God's honor and for His glory. We do it because we're commanded to. We don't do it because we have all the results or that people love it or that people love you for telling the truth that men are sinners and in need of a savior. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. And things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. The Bible says that very clearly. That no flesh, no flesh shall glory in his appearance. No flesh can do that. Why? Because man is a sinner. There is none righteous, no, not one. Right. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible is very clear, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. No man has to die and go to hell. He does so by his own choosing. But if he'll repent of his sins and, and understand that he's a sinner and know the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again the third day, and you might have life through his name. Jesus Christ came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. But unless a man repents, the Bible says you shall all likewise perish. If a man does not repent, he will perish. That perish is in hell. But God so loved the world, and he chose this foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Oh, and people look around, they wonder, why would somebody do this? Why would they, why would they do this? And we do it because God commanded it. And there is a heaven and there is a hell. And life will end one day in this world. And you have to make that decision. If my life were in today, are my sins forgiven? Do I believe I'm a sinner? Do I know I've committed grievous sins? Fornication, adultery, lasciviousness, wickedness, drunkenness, vileness, drug addiction pornography, all of those things. Are we guilty of those things? Are you guilty of those things? Have you committed those sins? The Bible says that you can have forgiveness of sins. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible says the grace of God will save you and cover your sins and give you a home in heaven. That grace is unmerited favor. It is a gift, a pure gift from God. Do you know you're a sinner? I know this sounds foolish to some. The Bible says it would, that it's the foolishness of preaching. But have you repented of your sins? Have you acknowledged there's a God in heaven? Are you, are you ready to answer to him one day? Have you been born again by the Spirit of God? Do you know that one day will be your last day and you'll call the record this warning that God gave you today? 
this warning that you must repent or you shall all likewise perish. And again, I know what it sounds like to you. It sounds like foolishness, but God said it would sound like because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And that's why we preach. And the weakness of God is stronger than man. But God hath chosen the foolishness of preaching. I hope that you'll consider it today. I hope that you'll be called to repentance today. I hope that you'll trust Christ. I hope that you'll see that you're a sinner and that your life will end one day. And how will you stand before God and what will you say to Him in that day? God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Thank you.